Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the flight deck of the American Airlines CRJ900. We are currently over the Caribbean Sea en route to Trinidad. Uh, took off out of Fort Lauderdale. Um, a while ago, let's see. Took off out of Fort Lauderdale two hours and 36 minutes ago. We got 20 minutes to top a descent, 19 minutes to top a descent, as you can see right here. And 34 minutes to touchdown. Gonna start getting ourselves prepared here. Um, smooth flight so far. Um, Try to crack these throttles back just a little bit. I want to be at about Mach 0.77. I want to be closer to 77 than 79. Let's put it that way. Um, as you can see, there's some high-level uh, cirrus clouds out there today. High-level cirrus clouds, which are actually Whoopsie, I just probably disconnected the autopilot, I didn't. Um, High-level cirrus clouds, which are actually made out of ice crystals. Isn't that weird? Um, before I get too much further, um, I, I've been on a CRJ kick lately, and I've just re-fallen in love with this airplane. This airplane doesn't get a whole lot of love in... Microsoft Flight Simulator, um, and I think part of the reason probably is that it's it's pretty straightforward to fly, and they have some great tutorials out there uh, on YouTube. But um, it is a hands-on airplane, uh, and when you're talking to people, let's see, landing level is set. Uh, actually, let's check the chart here. Um, when you're talking to people who are used to flying, people, you know, the, 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 the kind of the debate within Microsoft Flight Simulator at this point is, um, you know, the Airbus A320 versus this airplane, or versus, excuse me, the uh, it's 60 feet, I need to set that for um, so landing level is set 60 feet. Fuel is balanced and adequate. Uh, TCAS. Let's set the TCAS. It's right now set for normal. And what we want it for on landing is below. So it's standing below us. So we. Let's see. Radar is off, doesn't matter. I don't think radar works in Microsoft Flight Simulator. CAS is checked. Landing data. Let's go to performance. 139 knots. It's probably going to be closer to like 137, 136. Once we get... Uh, I'll, I'll hold off a little bit on that. But... Um, and let's, uh, I think we got to brief the approach here. That's the next step in the process. And of course, I've gone out of, yeah, landing, uh, approach briefing. I have gone out of the, if I hadn't set the landing data, I would have kind of gone out of order for the, uh, checklist. And that is a recipe for problems so I'm just gonna set that let's see I'm doing uh, putting up my let's see 37 times 3 is 111 that just gives us a this green ring here which kind of gives us an approximate top of descent make things a little easier for us just to visualize where that top of descent is 
Then we're going to put another range ring in of 30 nautical miles, which is about where you want to be at. Uh, about where you want to be at 10,000 feet. Um, getting back to the, the, the debate, kind of the, 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 the Boeing 737, the PMDG versus the A3, the various A320s, whether you want the free one, the, the, P, the, uh, Phoenix, whatever. Um, I think that the big reason why they're so popular and this one isn't is because frankly, with those two airplanes, you just have to turn knobs and press buttons, right? Um, they have auto throttle. They've got all the, the bells and whistles. Um, and you don't have to do anything, frankly. I mean, which I mean, which is the whole point of a modern airline, of course. Let's look at the... Doing some radio tuning here. We want to turn this off, auto, and on to manual these two settings here so that it doesn't pick so the nav radios don't pick up whatever frequency they find because what we want is ILS DME 109.7 um, and I kind of I mean, I've read some comments from people that this plane is buggy uh, and it may have been buggy a long time ago. It is certainly not buggy now. I, I don't... I, I think that um, a lot of the issues that people have are either from their own setups or not reading the documentation. Like, for example, my, you know, me spending two weeks trying to land, trying to fly an RNP approach in this airplane, which is not capable of flying RNP approaches. Well, that is one of the frequently asked questions on the Aerosoft forum in their FAQ section and they make it clear that this airplane doesn't fly RNP approaches neither in real life nor in um, nor in the sim so you know I'm trying to fly this approach and I tried it probably literally probably eight times before I finally figured out it can't fly that approach and I'm sitting there trying to figure out okay what's wrong with this plane or what am I, my attitude is more like what am I doing wrong but a lot of people are immediately like you know what's wrong with this thing well guess what user error is what was wrong with it um, you know and this, this, this nonsensical discussion of study level what is study level study, study level means nothing it really means nothing. Um, this airplane, all the systems work. Um, there isn't a button up here that doesn't work. And that doesn't have an effect on... <laughs> you know, on the performance of the aircraft. Literally, every button up here works. Every single one of them. Every single button here works. Um, every single button, literally every single button here works. Every single one of them. All the co the the co-pilots, all this stuff. Um, I have I use uh, I mean even the even the oxygen masks work. Um, I use um, FSU IPC seven for setting up my controls. In every other airplane except this one, and in this aircraft, I use what um, what Aeros. I, I do it exactly as Aerosoft said to, and it works perfectly fine. Um, so, you know, if you want coupled VNAV. Which is available on the plane, but most operators don't have it. Uh, you can just hit that button and you get coupled VNAV, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, to me, this is a perfectly... Perfectly good airplane. Beautifully modeled. 
flies really well. I always love it when people say it. Especially about real airplanes, they're like, ah, oh, this one flies really well, what's it supposed to do? It's a Piper Cherokee, for crying out loud. So, um, 10 minutes to top of descent. So I, I just, I think this airplane gets a lack of love in the sim, and um, without auto throttles and without coupled VNAV, it's it's a hands-on airplane. Uh, and if you are 10 knots too fast, you're going to, you know, on, on final, it's going to be a problem. If you're 10 knots too slow on final, it's going to be a problem. So it's not just a matter of taking this speed not this speed button and dialing in a speed and watching it happen. You're going to see, like right now, I've got this set to Mach 0.77. That only makes any difference. You can see I'm going 0.773. It only makes a difference. Uh, like if I were to go full, th uh, well, you know, to, to use, uh, to climb. I mean, if I set this to 39,000 and went full throttle right now, it would, it would climb at 0.77 because there's excess thrust for the state of the airplane. Um, but in a descent, like in a, in a, so in a climb, you can use a uh, speed mode in a descent. It's, it's, you know, not of much use to you or not of any use to you. Uh, and you've got to control that speed yourself, the 250 at 10,000, um, any kind of crossing restrictions. Um, so you're constantly uh, flying the airplane. And it's just not something that, uh, that you have to do in the other airplanes. And I love it. I mean, for me, uh, having it be hands-on and having everything work. I mean, everything works. You know, everything. Um... I just, I think it's a fantastic aircraft. Uh, it's, and it teaches you how to fly. Like, you have to learn how to manage energy, effect, uh, essentially. That's really what you have to learn how to do. Um, and systems, you have to, you have to know how to, you know, um, manage systems and manage configurations and, and stuff like that and you can see that our green line is right on the top of the sentence perfect today um, but it's a very manual airplane um, in terms of flying which to me is a huge plus I, just, I think it's awesome uh, and clearly to a lot of people that's not a plus um, I think if I'm if I move up from this to this to the 737, which I may do, I don't I don't really know. If it goes on sale, I might buy it in the next couple of weeks, like Black Friday or or the the um, 40th anniversary re you know release. If it if the seven if the PM PMDG 7378 goes on goes on sale, I'll probably pick it up. But I'm not going to spend 70 bucks on it. But I, I guarantee you, and the thing is, like, the, the FMC, everything in the FMC works. Everything in the FMC works. Uh, and if you go from, if you learn this FMC, and you go to the 737, you're not going to have any problems. Uh, let's brief this approach. A is 126.7. Let's get our weather. Let's get our weather. All right, 1800 Zulu. I'm sorry, 1733 Zulu. Wind to zero, nine or zero at eight knots, 8,000, which means um, runway visual range of 8,000 feet. If I have time, I'll talk a little bit about runway visual range before we land, but light, sh light thunder shower, light thunder showers. Few clouds at a thousand scattered, seventeen hundred. Temperature two six, dew point two four, altimeter one zero one zero. 
Uh, remarks, CB, which is cumulonimbus. And I do expect you guys to look that up and tell me if I'm wrong. Cumulonimbus north and northeast of the field. So I always talk about this. The, the temperature 26, 2.24. It, that's in Celsius, obviously. Um, if the temperature dew point spread in Celsius is less than 5 degrees, you can expect what the FAA refers to as restrictions to visibility. In other words, you might you either have clouds or fog or whatever. So, we've got the weather. There is no controller down there right now. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, we've got the localizer tuned. Just pulling up my checklist here for, uh, for this type of approach that I've written out on for flight. Um, so got the localizer tuned. Uh, final approach course 105, glide slope intercept is PR code at 1400. ILS decision altitude is 265. Airport elevation is 60 feet, runway elevation 30 feet. Missed approach, climb straight ahead to 2000. Right climbing turn to 4100 to POS, VOR, and hold. And that would be a direct entry to a non-standard holding pattern. Non-standard is left-hand turns. To make a right-hand turn, climb to 4100, direct POS. And hold, direct entry. So we cross shark at 4,100 feet. Descent below 4,100, not authorized until inbound on the ILS. Uh, cross shark at 4,100 and intercept. You can also drop down to 1,400 and pick up the ILS there. That's not what I'm going to do. Um, before I... Before I keep just running my pie hole here, set in that altitude. Alright. So we cross shark at 4100, intercept the glide slope 105, down. Uh, three degree glide slope, we're going to be at, let's see. See, I told you this is going to drop a little bit, 137. So, 142-ish. Eleven nautical miles to top of descent. Um, so we're gonna uh, coming down to Curry, Curry, forty one hundred feet. The Shark, which is our initial approach fix, inbound Shark one hundred five. Intercept the ILS, and down we go. 140 knots is right about 700 feet a minute. It's a high intensity approach light system with pappies on the left. Missed approach, climb to 2200. Right hand turn, or excuse me, heading a 105, which is straight ahead. Then a climbing right turn to the VOR. 
ILS is 265 feet. Now runway visual range, 550 meters. We got 8,000 feet. It's plenty in meters, give or take three feet. So we should be good. Time to get my pre-landing fidgeting in. And there we go on the descent. We'll go vertical speed. Come way back on the power. So I don't mind being a little bit below the glide slope on the descent. The glide slope being this snowflake right here. You also got the little blue circle which tells you what descent range you have to hit to maintain that slope. I don't mind being a tiny bit below it because I would like to be I would like to be level at 4100 feet well before shark. Um, matter of fact 10 miles from shark and that will give me the ability to slow down and set up. This slow. And this is what I mean. I pulled the speed all the I pulled the power all the way back and the speed drops right off. So um, we can expect this to be a we can really expect this to be a real approach. Um uh, So I'm going to turn a little bit of the lighting on just in case we get into some muck down here and wind up uh, needing to see the, the buttons here because that is possible. So at 31,600, we will switch over to miles per hour, in which case we want two ninety ish in the descent. I'm not going to go that high. see we've got some clouds around and see off in the distance there's the island this is one of the prettier approaches in my opinion in the Caribbean if you guys have never flown this is actually a close to Venezuela if you guys have never flown the any of the approaches into, into uh, into Trinidad, I would recommend doing it. It's really pretty. It doesn't matter what airplane you fly. And there's a package that gets you... I'll, sh I'll sh put the link in the description. There's a package that gets you this airport and uh, Tobago and um, Grenada. Three airports. And I think it's a pretty good deal. Oh, yes. Gotta put that in, don't we? Put 
Putting in a decision height on this takes forever. It's really kind of annoying. I usually just put it in an MDA. If I can. The MDA goes by 10 feet. Every 10 feet, this one go. The decision height goes by foot, and so it just takes forever. So if like the if the decision height is an even number, I'll just put it in an MDA. It's probably it's probably a reason why you shouldn't do that. I don't know what reason that is, but I just find it annoying. Yep, alright, so we got curry, we got shark. Whoopsie, and see what I'm saying? Like, you're not paying attention, and all of a sudden your speed is 300 knots. And see, there's a, there's a row of, there's a mountain range on the north side of the island, which is probably where this weather is coming from. I do the same thing in the sim that I do in the real plane. I stop breathing <laughs> when I start really focusing on an approach, and it's not a good plan. I, re I literally have to remind myself, breathe. All right, flight attendants advise passenger signs are on. Thrust, advi thrust advisors, yes. Thrust reversers armed. And landing in slats and flaps, okay. It's good to know what your own physiological reactions to stress are when you're fl for flying. Because it, it is stressful. It is stressful. Oh, don't start doing this. No, see. Oh, come on. Brilliant. So my... My, uh... There's a light right behind me from on the floor from the, one of the windows. And if it gets in range of the track IR, it will, it will uh, take over, as you can see. So I had to close the door. And there we are, coming into Trinidad. Alright, so... Now 
I gotta do my pre-landing f uh, fussing all over again. That is Venezuela right there. Here we go. PRCO traffic, uh, American 8682, uh, 50 miles to the north, inbound runway 10, PRCO. Only a slight lie. Alright. I need 50, I need 250 knots here. Landing lights coming on. I need it to go. I needed to go uh, idle power sooner than I did. Never used speed brakes in this plane before. And as this gets closer inside this inner ring, I just pull it back, pull it back to that time and that gives you let's look real quick again at the V nav it's giving us position uh, okay Now the next speed I'm looking for is actually in this case going to be 180 knots. That's what I want. I'm going to slow this plane down. I've never used the speed brakes, actually. Which I want to do, because I want to get down. Zero one zero is the altimeter. Thank God I looked that up before. And like I said, this is a really pretty approach. I'll dial back that descent rate just a little bit. That's going to help slow me down. And then what I can do is 210 knots, but in a degree of flaps.
Putting eight degrees of flaps now. Can put the uh, speed brakes back up. Come in with a bit of power. And this is what I'm talking about when the when the auto throttle thing makes a real difference. Once I cross curry, which I just did, I'm going 20 notches of flaps. I'm down to 160 on the speed. I'm just dialing this in as a reminder to myself. Doesn't actually do anything. Now I'm going to hit approach mode. Now you can see the glides, the localizer here. I'll get a little bit of a closer in view. that close. Okay, localizer is armed. And slow. Should be one oh five. Okay, flaps 30, I'm going gear down. Full flaps. Okay, gear down, full flaps, thrust reverses are armed. Three thousand six hundred for two sixty-five. I want to keep it right at about. I'm gonna try sixty-three-ish and one. See how that does. That airspeed is all in my right hand right now with those throttles.
3,465. You can see this is the localizer. This is the glide slope. You can see they're both captured. See the distance here. Everything is looking good. A little bit slow. Piarco traffic, American 868, 10 mile final runway 10 Piarco. Getting a little bit slow still. Now I'm just putting in a little bit of power. I'm just going to wait and see how this plays out. Yeah, it is getting slow. Twenty two hundred for two sixty five. Speed is better. Back off a little bit now. That yeah, doesn't like it backing off. All right, right about sixty nine ish, it seems sixty eight, sixty nine, seven miles, got nineteen hundred for two sixty five. Yes, yeah, I figured that was going to happen. Now it's picking up a little bit. There's something going on back there that made that speed slow down. I don't know quite what it was. Normally 63 to 65 will do you pretty good. Fifteen for two sixty five. Keep an eye on the on the distance measurement right there. It's the precise distance measurement. All right, gears down, flaps full, thrust reversers are armed. Airspeed is pretty good. Piarco traffic, American eight six eight five mile final runway one zero Piarco. Nose is dropping, that's One why that's mile. picking up. Thousand to, thousand to go, that is uh, stabilized. Back on the power just a little bit. Nose is coming back up. So, I'm going to put some more power in now. Oh, that's dropping like a stone again. 600 for 265. 500. See, I'm worried about that airspeed dropping right off. Four hundred. All right, we're going autopilot off. Kick it right back up. Three hundred. Minimums. Continuing. Minimums. 200. Sink rate. 100. Minimums. 50. 40. 30. 20. 10. That was the best landing I have ever made in this airplane. And reverser is armed. Alright, at 60 knots we can stow the reversers. Hands down the best best landing I've ever made in this airplane. Hands down.
And I mean hands down the best landing I've ever made in this airplane. By a country mile, that was just... As the, uh, I forget the, I forget the guy's name. Old golf announcer used to say, useful, useful one, that one, useful. That was a useful landing, folks. And we'll slow ourselves down. Let's go to the checklist here after landing. APU. Piarco traffic, American 868, clear the runway, Piarco. And we'll get that going. Transponder. Whatever. TCAS is good. We will retract the flaps because we are professional pilots. Turn off the landing lights. We will turn on the recog taxi lights. Probes off. Rust reverser is off. Alright, now. I mean, for that landing, we deserve a prime parking spot. That is my opinion. And by the way, I would be remiss if I didn't send a shout out to my good friend Zarnell Hughes. Zarnell, that was a butter landing, my friend. For those of you who don't know, Zarnell doesn't know anything other than butter landings. Man makes one butter landing after another. Get in here. Perfect. And I'm just going to bask in that one. I mean, that one was just awesome. It's a good feeling, too. The, the other thing I was thinking about, like when you, when I was talking about how this plane requires a lot of manual flying, a lot of manual control. Um,. And there's the parking brake. And uh, we'll let the people free. See both signs off, thruster versus off. Uh, anti ice fuel pumps. Okay. The turn the lights off. Nose wheel steering off. Um I've been working on my landings with this airplane. And it's satisfying to to spend the amount of the amount of time that I've spent um 
learning uh learning how to fly this thing really and to get a landing like that is just very satisfying APU is running engines are shutting down I'm going to do the whole kit and caboodle because I'm so proud of myself let's go PR go ground let's get the jetway There's a package that you can buy that gives, whoa. It's like pilot service here. That you can get that, uh, board cargo, rear cargo service. Open the passenger door. There's a package you can get which, uh, I don't know where the baggage service is. It's a package you can get that gives you uh, regional, like, you know, food trucks and like all that stuff. So it's not just, you know, which I think is really pretty cool. And uh, I do think I'm going to, I'm going to get me some of that. So, like I said, um, this is, by the way, this is um, Aerosoft Simple Traffic that I use that gives you all these different deliveries. And they might not, you know, this one might not be correct for the area or whatever. Like, if they don't, if they don't have the livery that they're trying to, trying to render, they'll just use a random one, which is fine. It's better than having nothing. You liars tell me you know what the baggage truck is. Like, but there, like, see, there's a Caribbean flight, Caribbean Airways, Airlines, pardon me. There we go. I love how they just, they just drive it right through the side of the plane. Boink, dude gets decapitated. Some catering service, man. Some catering service? Alright. Um, but again, this is a payware plane, and there's a Amerijet, by the way, they fly around all over the Caribbean, delivering pa packages and stuff across the notes there. So, a very satisfying flight. Uh, my humans are there, got my baggage stores open. So, like I said, I think this is a really cool plane. It's a, it's a good plane to learn on. It's, you can learn a lot from this plane. And I think that makes it pretty unique. And I think uh, if I were to fly this airplane for a while, which I have been, and I'm really getting comfortable with it now. Uh, and then, you know, upgrade, so to speak, the 737, I think I'd be able to fly the 737 like a breeze so um cool f cool our airport package i don't think it was expensive and uh, i enjoy like i said i enjoy flying down you can see this mountain range and the truck drives right through the side of the plane some of my coolest flights actually have been into trinidad so to me it's a very worthwhile um airport package to have and in any event, um, I hope uh, hope more people give some consideration to this airplane because I think it's a I think it's a pretty cool airplane. And I hope you guys are doing well. And I look forward to your comments. And I will get back into uh, some smaller planes here and do some do some little island hops. Uh, here shortly but uh, take care everybody and uh, have a great rest of your day